On March 5, 1982, a Soviet spacecraft landed on the most hostile planet in the solar system. And believe it or not, it survived. Well, barely. Just 57 minutes. But in that short time, it captured something incredible. One of the only color photos we have ever seen from the surface of Venus. More than four decades later, that photo is still one of the best we have from Venus's surface. The Venera missions were a series of probes launched by the Soviet Union between the 1960s and the 1980s. Their goal? To explore Venus up close and maybe, just maybe, send back the very first photos from the surface of another planet. Across the program, 13 probes successfully reached Venus, 8 made it all the way down to the surface, and 4 of them, just 4, managed to take photographs, photos of a road no human eye had ever seen. The Soviets even considered the possibility of sending humans to Venus, as they initially viewed it as a potential twin sister to Earth, and maybe even a candidate for life. It was actually a space race, both the Soviets and NASA were planning a manned flyby of Venus in the early 1950s. But even before the Venera landers touched down, flyby and atmospheric probes sent by both the US and the USSR had already delivered alarming clues. This place is so brutal that most spacecraft wouldn't last a minute. The temperature at the surface reaches around 900 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. The air pressure over 90 times that of Earth's, like being 3000 feet under the ocean. And all of that is hidden beneath clouds of sulfuric acid. So the Soviets had to carefully plan how to face Venus's extreme environment, one of the most challenging in the solar system. Conquering Venus became a way to show off technological toughness. If we can survive this, we can survive anything. It became a matter of national pride to build landers that could withstand 900 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 atmospheres of crushing pressure. During the Cold War space race, the US was focused on the Moon and later Mars, so the Soviets chose Venus as a way to dominate a different front. To replicate what it would be like on Venus's surface, they developed simulation chambers on Earth. These could mimic the heat, pressure and atmosphere of Venus in controlled conditions. Then they built the landers using titanium alloys and high-strength stainless steel, materials chosen to survive the crushing pressure and scorching heat. The Soviets knew they couldn't build something that would survive forever, so they designed the landers to last just long enough around 60 to 120 minutes. The probes were optimized for surface operations with an unusual design that included a spherical compartment to protect the electronics from atmospheric pressure and heat for as long as possible. Beneath this was a shock-absorbing crush ring for landing. Above the pressure sphere was a cylindrical antenna structure and a dish-shaped structure that resembled an antenna but was actually an aero brake. To capture images, they used periscope systems. Lenses were placed on the exterior. This clever setup allowed them to take photographs without exposing delicate equipment to the extreme environment. And during the descent, the Soviets couldn't afford to waste a single minute. Data transmission had to begin instantly upon landing, sending information across 24 million miles back to Earth. Venera 9 was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which was the main Soviet spaceport and even years later is still used by Russia. Specifically, it launched on June 8, 1975 and reached Venus at October of the same year. A very quick trip considering the size of the solar system. At this point, you might wonder why the first successful Venera probe wasn't called Venera 1 but Venera 9. That's because it was the ninth Soviet attempt to reach Venus. Many of the earlier missions failed entirely, or only managed to transmit limited data. But Venera 9 finally got to Venus through a carefully planned interplanetary trajectory using a multi-stage Soviet launch system. On October 20th, 1975, as it neared Venus, the spacecraft separated into two parts. The orbiter entered Venus's orbit and studied the atmosphere and surface from above. The descent module entered the Venusian atmosphere towards the surface. The lander survived a brutal atmospheric entry. It worked, but only one of the two lens caps popped off. 
So instead of a full 360 degrees panorama, we got a 180 degrees image. Still, it was the first photo ever taken from the surface of another planet. Venera 9 revealed a smooth surface with numerous stones and showed a hazy atmosphere with no visible horizon. Visibility was only about 1 to 2 kilometers. The reflectivity and texture of the rocks suggested basaltic material, indicating volcanic activity in Venus's geological past. And the data transmitted back to Earth confirmed what past probe missions detected passing by Venus extreme temperatures and a high pressure environment. That's why Venera 9 only survived 53 minutes. But that wasn't enough for the Soviets. They wanted more data, better images and longer survival times. Each Venera mission was being designed to land in a different region to study geology, atmosphere and surface conditions. So Venera 10 followed a few months later and it had the same issue. One landscape got stuck, but it gave us another glimpse, flat slabs of rock similar to volcanic plains here on Earth. In 1978, Venera 11 and 12 tried to go one step further, color images, but this time both landscapes failed to eject. They returned great scientific data, but no photos. So engineers made some improvements. And in 1982, Venera 13 landed on Venus. This time the landscapes did eject, and for 127 minutes the lander survived, longer than anyone expected. It captured beautiful full-color images, dark, flat rocks, strange soil, and the landscape itself lying in front of the camera. Just four days later, Venera 14 touched down in a different region. The camera worked, but the terrain was different, more fractured ground, less soil and once again, the yellow sky above the landscape. Venera 15 and 16 were different compared to past missions. As their entry probes were replaced with surface imaging radar equipment, the result was a detailed map of the radar reflectivity across the Venusian northern hemisphere. Since then, we haven't gotten any more images. These two photos from Venera 13 and 14 are still the best close-up pictures we have from the surface of Venus and it's been decades since we got a new photo from Venus's surface. But that might change soon. The possible detection of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere in September 2020 raised many questions. On Earth, phosphine is often linked to biology. Venus is hot and acidic, so phosphine shouldn't naturally form there. So it made scientists interest in exploring Venus with new missions. One of the upcoming missions is NASA's Da Vinci Plus, currently planned for launch in 2029. It will send a descent probe into Venus's atmosphere, taking measurements and photos as it falls. Other countries are also interested, such as ESA members, India and Russia. Russia has actually been working on Venera D, proposed by Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. Who you reach Venus first? Or will those 1982 Venera photos be the only ones we have for the next 100 years? Besides this video just watched, there are many others waiting to be seen. To get more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.